if you look at, let's say, innovation before industrialization, then surely there was innovation. And when I talk of innovation, I'm talking of technological, technical innovation. I'm not talking of institutional innovations. Uh, surely there was innovative activity. There were no formal science and technology structures. Yes, and the stage has come where India and China together accounted for something like 60% of world GDP. So that was a trajectory devoid of the present day science and technology structures. Now of course that trajectory has its limitations and so has the construct coming out of industrial trajectory or industrialization trajectory has its limitation. That's what we are talking about. What next? environmental limitation, limitations of creating disparities and so on and so forth. So, I would not use any standard terminology, but say there are elements in our in innovation discourse which are present both in the so-called grassroots and the so-called formal innovations, except that when you talk of one, you can pick up few elements and construct an innovation dialogue. And you talk of grassroots, you pick up few elements. What are these elements? Number one is institutional form of innovation. In the industrial context, you say formal. The moment you talk of grassroots type, you say informal. Ask myself, is informal absent in industrialization context? No. I mean, there are a lot of informal exchanges, the kind of knowledge exchange amongst people and so on, which is not in the formal structures. So informal is present there, agreed. The formal institutional structures are missing in grassroots type. The second is, I think this is important, innovators' relationship with land and nature. If you go to the period of, let's say, agriculture economy, then the relationship with land was essentially as a provider of livelihood and sustenance. In the industrial context, the relationship is land and nature as a resource, raw material resource. So that's the difference in the two contexts. Idealized, doesn't matter, it's a mixture. The third is knowledge base. As I said, in the industrialized construct of innovation, with science and technology, formal, whereas in the grassroots context, we talk of knowledge which is either skills or experiential or tacit. Once again, is Tacit, experiential missing in the industrialized context? No, those elements are present. But somehow in our innovation construct, we leave them out the moment you are talking of a construct essentially contained in steps document of innovation. The other element is the value driver. Very interestingly, Professor Gupta says <coughs> value driver empathy not prepared to live with problems, just sheer survival. I wonder what is the value driver in the industrialized context? I think it's economic growth. Now if we use the term post-industrialization, then the question of equity and so on and so forth comes. But the dominant literature on innovation in the industrialized context still relates to markets, economic development. So the value drivers are different. The next is the nature of surrounding governance context. Now in the case of uh, grassroots, uh, it did create social divides. I mean, 
to talk of tea in the civilization, I, I would admit that this did create social divide between the have and have not, between the knowledge, formal knowledge, uh, those who could acquire, those who could not. Whereas I think the industry context, it was slightly less. The disparities, economic disparities in the industrialized, industrialized context and in the agriculture context were both very high. Now the question is, which of the sub-elements does one construct we are discussing? What is the sub what are the sub-elements that we are discussing today in terms of innovation? I find that both constructs are key. One talks about science technology, formal structures, corporate structures and so on. The other is talking about informal systems experiential knowledge, basic knowledge, technology equipped to skills, value drivers are different. What we are trying to say is that we want to pick up plus points, merits from the industrial concern and the value drivers and merits from the agrarian construct. This is not, this versus that, I think this is a crucial point. The debate dialogue is not this construct versus that construct. Innovation is innovation, irrespective of location. It's how we construct the dialogue around innovation. Which elements do we emphasize? Which elements do we leave out? Makes all the difference. Whereas both elements are present in both. It's not a clear cut distinction that one is informal, the other is totally formal, one is only science and technology knowledge, the other is only skills and no. Now the institutional difficulty is, which is my present concern, how come our formal educational institutions do not consider the knowledge of the community and so on as a genuine knowledge? Interestingly, Steph's document says, how does one take the benefits to the people? The knowledge is science and technology, how do you fill the gap amongst people? But what I am saying is, what Professor Gupta has been saying is, that knowledge resides there. I think the bottom of the pyramid term has ruined our understanding. We simply think that people who are economically poor are also knowledge poor. Whereas by and large, 60, 70, 80 percent of population of the world has that knowledge acquired from this, that. Why can't we link it? <coughs> and I think the, the agenda for me, very specific agenda is that our formal educational institutions should somehow get engaged with that knowledge rather than sticking to whatever comes to the formal structure. This is the mission which, when Professor Yeshpal was the chairman of UGC, we had launched. Open up the university, let students, after one year, two years in the classroom, go out and learn from the people. There is a wealth of knowledge running around. A small step has been taken by the Ambedkar University of Delhi of creating a center for community knowledge, so that hardcore researchers in the field, in both documents talk of engagement of social scientists. Which again says that here are the experts and they will go and do something. There is no mention of these social scientists have to learn. So, it's a, so we are saying create a center for community knowledge where the curricula itself would be a blend of what is available in the community and what is the traditional disciplinary breakdown. The difficulty of course is the, the taxonomy of the two are very different. So this itself is a challenge. How do you create a taxonomy, searchable taxonomy for let's say the political scientist to get information which is contained in the description of the community. But yes, this is not a challenge to make to India. This challenge is being tackled 
in Cambridge, UK, in several American universities. So one of the agenda should be to synchronize the two. Treat innovation, don't split the innovation to grassroots and this mother innovation. Innovation is innovation. It's only the institutional connections that somehow give us the impression that grassroots is for rural areas and the other is for urban areas. Innovation is innovation. Once you have a synergetic connection, then you will see that the value systems of the grassroots in terms of relationship with land, in the other system now it's been termed as bioeconomics. So simply <coughs> land based, cultivation based economy, but now it's called bioeconomics. The informal structures are now called social networks. So I think the, the, it's not so polarized the situation. By, by giving different terms, we, we, we are, I think, enhancing the innovation device. Thank you, sir.